From hot spots to hidden gyms, this is your guide to all things local, the LA unscripted way from the Seerific Aquarium of the Pacific. Sharks, frogs, and fish. There are more than 100 exhibits in this Long Beach destination. And for the next half an hour, we are diving in to schools of SoCal adventures. Hi, everyone. I'm Dana Devon. And if you are looking for a fantastic time all year round, the Aquarium of the Pacific bubbles over with ideas for all ages. Look at that. The Aquarium of the Pacific is a great place to come if you already love nature or if you don't know very much about nature. We offer transformative experiences. You get to be up close and personal with our animals through the glass or through touch experiences, moon jellies, sea stars, rays. They hate me. The Aquarium of the Pacific is located in Long Beach. We feature all the different kinds of animals and plants that you could find in the Pacific Ocean, either from the coast of California all the way out to the, the islands of Palau. So you know what's amazing here, you guys, is you can actually get so close to these fish. One of our signature exhibits you see right when you walk through the front door is the Blue Cavern. Now this mimics a location off of Catalina. So we have three stories of glass so that you can see these giant kelp strands and the giant sea bass. Like, I just can't stop staring at them. Oh my God, you are so cool. They are very impressive. The Aquarium is really excited to premiere a new film this summer. It's called Love and Life Beyond the Glass. And this features the relationship that our animal care team has with our seals and sea lions. So we are at our sea otter habitat right now where we have all of our non-releasable southern sea otters on display for folks to learn about, engage with, and we're here to teach you how cool sea otters are so that you can learn to help protect them in the future. The southern sea otters don't really have a craving for fish. So part of your, your program here is to re-release some otters. Can you talk about that? In 2001, Monterey Bay Aquarium started the sea otter surrogacy program. In 2023, we were issued our permit to be a partner of this program where we are pairing stranded orphaned pups with adult females, allowing them to raise those pups behind the scenes. So the mom is teaching them grooming, foraging, socialization. And once that pup is big enough and ready to know all of those skills, it will get re-released back into the ocean. Right now we are in our neighbor section of our amphibian gallery and so these animals represent animals you'd find here in California and also as far south as Mexico. So we have some toads here, we have actually axolotls as well and they have become one of the most popular animals here at the aquarium seemingly overnight. Talk to me about your conservancy. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So with our mountain yellow-legged frogs, that is a species that is considered endangered here in California. Our part is actually called head starting, which means that we take tadpoles that were either salvaged from a wildfire or animals that were bred at another zoo or an aquarium, and we raise them until they're frogs, and at that point, they're ready to release. Okay, I'm here with Axel, and I, I would say, Axel, you're one of like, almost like the mascots of the Aquarium of the Pacific. Oh, yeah, yeah, especially here in our new exhibit, Frogs Facing a Changing World. Uh-huh. Yeah, where it's all about amphibians, just like me. Well, we do a lot of different programs to help, particularly the animals that are threatened and endangered off of California's coast. Conservation of our animals and plants here in Southern California and across the world is a collective action responsibility, which means that you and the person sitting next to you and your, your grandchildren all have the ability to shape what our future is, and we want to work together to make sure that future is as sustainable as possible. Okay, I have to say, after all that, I like a lot of axolotl. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, I get it. <laughs> now let's cast it over to Olivia De Bortoli, but before we go, let's do a KTLA high five. Ready? Okay, ready. And then high five. High five. Yeah! <laughs> let's go! Yeah! <laughs> Sound and music can heal you in so many ways, especially with these bowls right here and this wonderful woman right here. <laughs> Thank you. It's important, I think, for me as a musician to add 
sometimes songs with words and then sometimes just sounds. Because it makes, again, this sacred space that people can just float and suddenly they land in their body and they're feeling something or they feel someone they love that's not with them and that perhaps has passed over, whatever it is. But the sound really helps you to connect with a bigger, bigger, maybe what we call the invisible. Sound can take us in places where nothing else can. So, so many of our pains or our illnesses, our sufferings come and get blocked. They get stuck in the body and sound and music as we all know has the ability to go into those places without us ever having to talk about it and move the energy. So I've been playing the bowls for just about 18 years now and I was living in Germany working as a professor and opera singer and running a kids foundation and I would start to use the bowls with my students and what I would notice is if somebody had a blockage in their voice and they played a bowl and ah uh, and then trained their voice with a bowl the blockage would dissipate. My young son, who was seven at the time, he loved the bowls and he'd say, Mommy, bring me to bed with my sound blanket. You know, I'd put a bowl perhaps on his belly and he'd say, oh, I love those sound tickles. So he loved and knew those bowls. Fast forward, he passed away nine years ago and totally unexpected and sound became my, it became my medicine. It became my way to land in the grief, to have a safe place to feel it and then to let it dissolve, to let it move, to let it transform. Do you want the sound coming through the crown of your head down into the body? Or are you having the feeling, for example, that you need to connect to the earth? I want it, I want the light to come down to my head. Okay. All right, let's do it. And allow your breath to slow down. Because as your breath slows down, so do your thoughts. Sacred Vibrations, the transformative power of crystal and sound and music is really about this journey. Um, there's excerpts also from other leading scientists and uh, colleagues that are in the field of, of sound as medicine or sound healing. And it runs through it, my story with my son and the connection that I was able to achieve with him through sound vibration. My goal really is that people can feel the joy that I have come to know in spite of the loss of my child, that people can feel that sense of joy and hope and a centeredness within themselves, that they know life is good in spite of whatever trials and tribulations we each have. Don't be jelly, we've got more goodies coming your way. I mean, can you even look at this? Very popular, you could have it any day of the week. Well, let's have one now. Awesome. All right. <laughs> PC Block is a dessert shop located in Carson, California. We opened in 2013, and we specialize in Hawaiian shave ice, as well as other frozen desserts. Hawaiian shave ice is very, very specialized. It's shaved from a block of ice, very thinly shaved, which makes the texture really different from something like a snow cone. And so what that does is also helps to retain the flavor of the syrup. It's nice and fluffy, and it also just makes the experience a lot more enjoyable. The most popular flavors are cherry, banana, blue raspberry, blue bubble gum. We decided that we wanted to open a, a dessert shop, particularly shave ice, because you know my husband's family had a history in growing up in Hawaii. So tell me, how popular is shave ice in Hawaii? Um, you know, gosh, it's very, very popular. I mean, you go to Hawaii, and all the uh, you know all everyone that goes there has to have a shave ice. It's one of those treats that you could have every single day. I yeah. mean, it's one of those treats that I tried to get. Every Every single day when I was little and you know those memories of us walking down to the town and getting a shave ice and eating it you know that's what I kind of wanted to instill over here. We actually just started out as a catering business and a year later it blew up and we really had to open up a storefront to help accommodate all of the business that we were generating. Now we are here 10 years later. 
So at Tasty Block, we do Hawaiian shave ice, we do Lapert's ice cream, we also do pineapple dole soft serve, which is extremely popular. We also do some specialized desserts like halo halo, which is a Filipino dessert that consists of jackfruit and ice cream, condensed milk, evaporated milk, coconut gel. Oh my God. Halo halo means mix mix in uh, Filipino. And what you do is you basically just get a spoon and you mix everything and then you eat it. It's almost like every time it gets better and yeah, better as yeah. it mixes more and more. Yeah. And that's why that's our number two seller behind the shave ice. Yeah. A lot of people um, love Lapert's ice cream because they, you know, they, they know it from Hawaii. But uh, the reason why we use it is because they have quality ingredients and, um, and the name, everyone kind of knows it and, and um, they travel from far just to come and get it. Well, you know what else you can't find anywhere else? It's Dole Soft Serve. It's my absolute favorite. Yeah, around here, there's not a lot of places. Um, you know, there are, there are other places that do sell it, but um, you know, around here, this is the place to go. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> oh man. Oh. We're just getting started, but I'm getting quite chummy with my jawsome friends here. LA Unscripted from the Aquarium of the Pacific will be right back. Welcome back to LA Unscripted from the Aquarium of the Pacific. I'm Dana Devon, and we're having a riveting good time in Long Beach. So his name is Fig. He is a California newt, so we named him Fig. <laughs> Tell me this. I think this is so cool. They can excrete a fire... Resistant foam, yeah, that's what? exactly... <laughs> they can you excrete a fire-resistant yeah. foam? So they evolved where wildfire is unfortunately sort of a natural part of what they go through. And okay. so what they can do is burrow and they can excrete this foam that stops flames from burning them. And so certainly if it was a very long or extended wildfire, they wouldn't be protected from that. But short term, they can actually manage to survive wildfire through that. That is unbelievable. Yeah. And he's so cute. He is really <laughs> cute. If you ask me who is an official of fun, we'd say guilty as charged. Get it? Guilty. Okay, tell me about ice cream puffs. How did this start? I've always wanted to do something with dogs. I love dogs, I love animals, but, um, and then it kind of popped into my head if I can make a healthier version of ice cream, because all the dogs, I see everybody handing it down to their dog and giving it to their dog, so I thought the best thing to do would be come up with something that a dog can eat and is healthy. And how did you do that? Like, did you go through a lot of different tests with what, you know, like different recipes? Like, how did you, how did you come up with the actual? I just kept it very simple. So it's only four ingredients, it's vegan. It has a coconut milk base and cream, um, and it has a vegan stabilizer, and then it's strictly organic, natural blueberries, um, strawberries, the peanuts are crushed. It's just four ingredients, clean ingredients. Do you do special events? How do, how do people like find you guys? We do events, we do adoption events, we do parties, birthday parties, we make birthday cakes. Um, or we just give out the cups at a party. And so you, how did you, re you reached out to us, which was amazing, tell me about that. Well, so I've been watching LA Unscripted every Saturday night, because I have no life. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I just thought, you know, you're fun and you do these fun stories and you do all this interesting stuff around LA. Um, I feel like I have something that <clears throat> no one else has and I thought it'd be perfect for your show. I reached out to you through Instagram and she actually wrote back to me and um, and that's how I got connected here. So thank you. Of course, we're so happy to have you. Okay, so it's time, you guys. Do you want a treat? Riska, you want a treat? Nope. And look, we came in dog costumes because we're so excited about the ice cream pups. Oh yeah, just take the whole scoop in your mouth. You want some? Oh, they like it. These guys are really good. There's some peanut butter. Not bad at all. We check out all the cool things first, so don't go anywhere. LA Unscripted from the Aquarium of the Pacific will be right back, so don't leave us too soon. Welcome back to LA Unscripted. I have to say, we are overwhelmed with the good time we're having here at the aquarium. And now, something else to float your boat. They're 
are swimming with us. So Dana Wharf Sport Fishing and Whale Watching was started from Dana Point Harbor in 1971, and we were the first business to ever operate in the harbor. My father, Don Hansen, started it, and he is also recognized as starting whale watching off the coast of California. So we offer year-round sport fishing and whale watching trips. We also uh, offer private charters. We have things like wine cruises and live music cruises. We do a lot of different things. We take people out sport fishing on five hours and nine hour trips. We also fish uh, locally at Catalina and San Clemente Island. Our whale watching offerings, we go out three to five times a day. All of our trips are two hours in length and we have various boats, different sizes, and they hold different amounts of people. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that we have year round whale watching here in Dana Point and if you get to see a blue whale, it takes your breath away and it's a bucket list item. What types of whales do you think we could possibly see today? So just yesterday I saw blue whale, fin whale, minky whale. We just have to cross our fingers and toes and hope that we see them. Yes. All right, Captain, we're in your house right now. Tell me about all these things that you have going on. So right now we're 8.4 miles from Dana. This is like a bird's eye view of the ocean, right? Is this how you okay. spot the whales most of the time? Yeah, my eyes and these. <laughs> we saw well. Now what are you supposed to say? What am I supposed to say? Dar she blows. Oh, Dar she blows. <laughs> yeah, we saw well. Big whale, guys. Big whale. Oh. Wow. Oh my Whoa. gosh! Did you hear that sound? You are now looking at the largest animal that has ever lived on this planet. Larger than any dinosaur. Whoa. Larger than Megalodon. This is the blue whale. Wow. This is crazy. Dana Point is trademarked the dolphin and whale watching capital of the world. We see year round whales here and dolphins. We have the largest amount of common dolphins in the world, over 450,000 common dolphins just off our coast. We have humpbacks and we have fin whales, and then in the summer, we have blue whales. This is the perfect LA getaway because you're, we're only one hour from you and you can come down here and look at this. It's so beautiful, there's no traffic. It's just the most romantic spot too, so it's a good date place. Everything on land is impacted by what happens in this ocean. And everything we do on land impacts the ocean. So we need to protect this ocean so that these animals can have a healthy lifestyle as well. We saw a whale. Now let's float on over to another SoCal city. I've seen this place all over social media. It is the most out of this world experience, yet it's right here in the heart of Santa Monica. Let's go float. This is Into Me Sea, a play on the word intimacy. C S E A because we're all about the ocean and the healing aspects of it. It is a quantum wellness studio. First and foremost, this was established as a, a float center. Jen, the owner, she floated and she was blown away. And flotation meditation, as we like to call it, is floating in a very short 12 inches of water, more salt than the Dead Sea, and you just get into the zen. You turn off some senses and then other senses come to life. Athletes love it because it's the, the high concentration of salt is so good for muscles. So you just completely float in the water with your own self. So this is our Lulu's Higher Realm Ooh. crystal, galactic crystal intention tub. The galactic crystal intention tubs, we brought them over from Brazil and they're giant bathtubs and they're for energetic soaking. The idea is that you get into this tub and you have something that you want to manifest, an intention that you want to create for yourself. Okay, self-care for the win. You guys have to check out intimacy. All right, I've got a manifest, so out. 
Love you guys. We've come to the end of the line. Thank you so much to the Aquarium of the Pacific for schooling us and letting us go off script. Where will we be next? You never know, but I guarantee you it'll be fishy. We'll see you next time. Mwah.